I'm above Solby, just up from Thalter Will, by two ruined farmsteads, the Cregans and Corridy. And we've really come to these locations to look at the stone walls. It's one of the great fascinations on Manx Hills, the marvellous quality of the stonework, and it's a tradition that goes back a very long way. This is one of the most amazing places in the whole of this area because these stones here, these low stone walls, are actually the remains of an ancient keel or chapel, probably built about 14 or 1500 years ago. In here, a monk would have worshipped. He'd have come to the door, possibly to preach to anyone that was going past, and he'd have probably had a little house somewhere around here. But look at where the chapel has been built. It's actually in the middle of an old stone circle. You can just see the remains of some of the stones here. This is a Bronze Age circle, and that means it's about 3,000 years old. So this has been a very holy place for the Manx people for thousands of years. From where you are, this probably looks like a pile of old stones, but it's not. It's a well, a fantastic construction with steps down inside. It's probably a holy well and was associated with the keel up there. And that means that people have been drawing water from here for long centuries. There's no doubt that it was a hard life up here in the 18th and 19th centuries. You were almost entirely responsible for your own welfare and you had to have many skills, including building and repairing stone walls. They're wonderfully constructed, with overhanging capping stones to discourage the sheep from jumping over them, and one can only marvel at the time it must have taken to build and repair these miles of walls. Now, here's an interesting piece of kit right next to one of the barns. This was a horse walk, and you see them on a lot of the hill farms on the Isle of Man. There's a pit there with a big cogwheel in attached to a drive shaft, which also is attached to this post. Up from here came a bar that was attached to the poor old horse. And he or she would spend all afternoon walking round here. Now through there, there's a little window that the farmer could look through to see that the horse was all right. Stone was used for all the buildings, so no straw house here for the little piggies. Manx slate comes in all shapes and sizes. Nice big pieces like this one can stand in for gateposts. But the real skill was in building the houses and barns. Dry stone walling at its best, centuries old and still standing and still looking magnificent. Now there's something in here that's really quite peculiar and it's actually taken me a while to figure out what it is. You can see there the beginning of a tunnel built into the stone. And if you come up here, you realise that this tunnel runs down the whole of the length of the barn. The tunnel's got beautifully constructed sides and it's slabbed over with great lintels. And if you come to the other end of the barn, you can see where it comes out. Now this stone down here is actually the end of the tunnel, which comes right down the barn and along the side here. It's quite difficult to work out what this might have been used for. It's certainly too small to keep any animals in. You certainly couldn't crawl up there and you couldn't keep water in it because that would all drain away. Well, the clue to this mysterious tunnel is at the back of the farmhouse nearby. When building on a hillside, tradition had it that you cut the slope out at the back. This prevented the often wet earth from making the back walls of the house damp. It also prevented the earth from pressing against the wall and making it unstable. In effect, that's what they've done round the back of the barn. They've cut the land back to stop it pushing against the wall. But why have they covered it over? Why go to all that trouble? Well, it's simple. This is a working barn, and it had two storeys. 
and if you covered over this area, you could back your stiff cart right up to the window and offload the hay or the turnips or whatever you were keeping on the upper floor. These long abandoned farmhouses are really quite haunting. Often the slates have been removed from their roofs and used elsewhere, making their decline inevitable. Even so, there are occasional reminders of the people who once lived here. Across the valley from these buildings is the Thalty Will Plantation, which covers a huge area of the hillside above the Selby Valley. The wood is now densely grown, and deep inside are the remains of many buildings. They were once farms on the open hillside, but they've been long abandoned, and now the stones are covered in moss and hidden in secret places. And some of the buildings have rather peculiar features. Well, this is one of my favourite places in all of the plantations. It's like a small lost village, old stone buildings covered in moss deep in the forest. It's taken me about an hour to find this place because although I've been here before, I always get lost. And one of the features today, I'm afraid, are clouds of midges and, would you believe it, giant horseflies. So before we look at these buildings and try to find out what they were for, I'm just going to put my sleeves down. Well, the first thing you notice when you get here is the well, which is beautifully constructed like all Manx wells and the water in it is crystal clear. You've got to remember, of course, that when this farmstead was being used, there was no forest here and this was open hillside. Now, though, a giant fir tree is perched above it. There seems to be some sort of channel that runs away from the well and if you follow it, it's guided round the hillside and when it reaches a wall, there's a culvert built to let the water run underneath. So, perhaps it was like early piped water. Here's a row of slate stones, like standing stones. No one really knows what they were used for. This is such a magical spot up here with these ancient moss-covered stones and the wonderful dappled forest light. Now I assume that this was the shed to keep the farm carts in because it's got this lovely wide entrance and this amazing lintel up here. Just imagine trying to get that up there. This was actually quite a big complex. There are at least 10 buildings here, and in its day, it must have been quite a fine farm. The farmhouse itself would have commanded the best views over the valley, and it looks to me as though it hasn't been occupied for well over a century, which might help to explain something rather mysterious inside. Well, when you first come in, you might think it was just an ordinary Manx cottage, albeit very ruined. But when you start to examine some of these walls, you realise that they're not quite right. This wall here, for example, hasn't been keyed in at the end, which leads you to suspect that it was actually added much later. And if you come through this doorway here, you can see another stone structure that also hasn't been keyed in. Now, if this once was the kitchen, then it wouldn't have been much use for that afterwards when this enormous stone chamber was built. Though if you look through this doorway, you can still see the old fireplace. So why would anyone build a room within a room? Well, the only other buildings on the Isle of Man that have this feature are those associated with the mining industry. They were the explosive stores with an inner room where the explosives were kept and double outer walls to offer maximum protection. And indeed, if you look here, this doorway and that doorway are offset. If there was an explosion in there, the blast would come out and be taken by that wall. 
It could just be, therefore, that when this fell into disuse as a farmhouse, someone adapted it as an explosive store, because in Victorian times, mining was a feature of the Solby Valley.